we well, use my glasses. Well, the Hampton Commission on Disabilities, this me meeting is being um, audio taped and videotaped. And we will start with introductions. So, yes, if I can speak correctly, that would be good. We'll start with introductions. And we'll start um, with myself, and then we'll go around to my left. I'm Tori Eklund, and I'm the chair of the commission. Happy Shaughnessy and I serve as the ADA coordinator in Leah is on to the commission. City Councilor Mary Ann LaMarch. Jim Winston, member. Chris Geffen, coordinator of the Elders and Persons with Disabilities Unit for the District Attorney's Office. Okay, board members. Ruth McGrath, secretary. Oh, All right, um, the next item on the agenda is public comments. I don't think we have any members of the public. No. Uh, all right, and then we need, um, do we have a quorum for approval? We need to do the yeah, approval of the April 21st minutes. Yeah, we're one short for a quorum. We're one short for a quorum? We got five. One, two, one, two, three, oh, four, five. Yeah. That's right. Okay, we have a motion to approve. The minutes? It, it's, the, it's the feedback on the, uh, on the bikes. Yes, on the bikes above the table. Nobody's doing anything though right now. Yeah. We haven't had that before. Hmm. I thought it was my mouse, but it's not. It's oh. not. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve the minutes for the April 21st meeting? Move to approve. So all in favor? Aye. All right. Great, thank you. So our next agenda item is our, our guest speaker. Um, okay, I'm not sure what's happening to this, but maybe we're in such a small group I can shut this off. Oh, it is loud. There's, there's something happening. Yeah. I'm not, I don't even need Well, it's still audio. It, it, it's two different systems. Okay, gotcha. Do you think that's the way it's turned or something? This was facing us. Okay. I, I don't know if the DA is coming back. Oh, Jamie's outside to this. I don't want to turn around. Actually, it's interesting from DA's office. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. It was the summer of It was the summer I was in law school then. We are full of jobs. Is this your question? What more questions do you have? I don't know which office. No, no, no. Okay. Are we all set? Yes. Okay, so we have one guest speaker here. I'm sorry, what was your name? My name is Chris Geffen. I'm the coordinator of the unit at the Northwestern District Attorneys, Elders and Persons with Disabilities. Thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. So we have you here. So we will um, we will start then. And we were wanting to um, just learn more about the district attorney's office and the response to um, caregiver abuse, which is something that unfortunately happens a lot. So we just wanted to learn about um, sure. your program. Okay. Um, well, basically the way that our unit works is um, because we serve both populations, elders and persons with disabilities, the way that um, referrals come to our office come in many different ways. But since we are um, talking specifically about um, uh, persons with disabilities. Um, I'm not sure if you've all heard of the Disabled Persons Protection Commission, mm -hmm. okay? And I brought some information for you all. Mm -hmm. um, that is one way that we will get a report on, on a person with a disability. So if it's um, a caregiver, um, an allegation in regards primarily to caregivers, uh, they are the central clearinghouse for the state, uh, for the entire state. So they triage all the cases out to all the DAs all day long. So if you refer a case um, in the Northwestern District, it will go to them first, and then it will come to us for investigation or review. And we have to decide by looking at the information we have and doing up some follow-up with the, maybe the reporter, um, if there's any collateral contacts, um, 
if the police, if it notes on there that the police department, whatever one, has been notified, doing follow-up with that, with them, and then deciding how we're going to move forward if we are going to move forward. Um, if it's an allegation of a sexual uh, assault, uh, what we do is um, pretty automatically we will do what is called a forensic interview um, with the victim. A forensic interview is um, a team approach where it brings together the police department, our office, um, a victim witness advocate, uh, the prosecutor, and then uh, the forensic interviewer, which is me, and um, the police, and then anybody that provides service to that person, if there is a person of that nature, uh, as long as it's not the alleged abuser. And what we do is we only interview the victim one time on the sexual assault. Um, and that is done um, with me and the potential victim in a room, and then everyone else is in another room, and we video and audio record it. So it's one, it's one interview. They're not being interviewed multiple times, and um, we get um, the victim's point of view, whatever the victim has to tell us in regards to the allegation. Um, and that is, that's kind of a short synopsis of what a forensic interview is. Um, but it's really a, a, a better way to help the victim. And then we can decide from there, from what we've learned, is how we will go forward. And if we will go forward. Um, depends upon what the victim wants. Um, depends a lot about what we have for, uh, to build a case from. So that is one way that, um, that is one thing that we do. Um, financials, off, it, it's the same uh, with people with disabilities. Financials come in that way. Physical abuse comes that way. Um, and that's just one way. Um, and so we do the same things minus the interview. We collect the information, we look at the facts, and then of course proceed or not. Um, the other way we get them is through the district courts. So um, we may get a, have an arraignment um, today, for example, um, where someone has been physically assaulted by a family. You mean hit? It, it can be hit, it could be kicked, it could be um, anything. Um, Verbal it, abuse. It could be verbal abuse. It, it, it could be um, emotional abuse. That's a little bit harder. Uh, but harder generally, it's, it's um, any type of physical abuse. So hitting, punching, slapping, um, pushing, um, you know, slamming a door. Um, is someone slamming a door and being slammed a door in their face or the car door or you know anything <coughs> of that nature and say the police have been called and they arrest the, the uh, perpetrator we would see that <coughs> from the arraignment it might not have been it may not be a caretaker it may mm -hmm. be a boyfriend or a girlfriend mm -hmm. yep. or a child uh, or a grandchild um, it could be a neighbor. It could be anybody. Um, it could be somebody on the bus. Um, it it come, that really depends. It's very. It's all kind of over the place when you get them that way. Um, and so we would look at that, and we that would come immediately to our unit. We would see that immediately. That would be special attention to our unit. So what would you? I was so concerned about what I read in the Gazette today. What would you say, because they haven't apparently found that person yet, that guy, mm -hmm. but what would you call that type of an assault when somebody comes from behind you, grabs you by the neck and puts a knife to your throat, two women, so... Well, that would be an assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Um, it would it could be a number of different things. I don't... I can't speak to the details or the nature of a charge because I don't really, 
I mean, all I know is what I read in the newspaper, just mm -hmm. like everybody else. What was, I um, didn't get a chance to see that. What, what was that, what was the story in the Gazette today? There was two women that were um, accosted up on Main Street by a person. Mm. Um, and um, at Knife Point, one of them. I don't think, I don't both. believe, oh, yeah. both, okay. We didn't know the, the difference is, is um, they, were, the, they didn't know the assailant. Right. Oh, they did know them? They did not. They did not. They did well, not. And, and, but, oh, but I guess here's what I would ask. Are they, I mean, that could happen to any one of us walking out. Exactly. It, it doesn't concerned. matter if we have a disability or we're an mm -hmm. elder or whoever we are. That could happen to anybody on the street. Exactly. Um, I don't, um, you know, so we will have to wait to see what happens. I'm um, just hoping that they, have they found him? No, I think uh, what I read was they had a description, uh, but it was Jody Casper, I think, was the um, uh, person that they were quoting from the paper from the police department, but they don't have anybody as of recently apprehended. You no, know, I was telling him, Christy, that we have never had that happen right. on Main Street, ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very scary. And if somebody's looking for a pocketbook with wallets, you know what that's all about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yes, it's probably not somebody from Northampton. Or it could be so. It could be from anywhere. It yeah. could be exactly. somebody from Northampton that you know decided they were going to do that that particular day. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's unsafe. Mm -hmm. You know, to do two incidences in one day. That's safe. That that that. It's just not safe. Yeah, probably the same person though. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I would guess. So, um, so, and it could be that sometimes persons with disabilities and elders are um, physically assaulted by people that they don't know. Very not that severe, mm -hmm. but we've had cases where you know, people have been waiting for the bus or walking down the street and in a coffee shop and somebody has come in and um, by, for whatever reason, decided that that was going to be the person today that they were going to um, have an episode with. So that might come to us. Um, and those, those, and a lot of those situations, it, like the one you're discussing uh, previously, our bills aren't targeted, um, what we call targeted. So we would have to, but if it was a person with a disability or an elder, we would take that case. Um, so those are the kind, those are the ways, um, two of the ways. The third way uh, that cases oftentimes come to us is by um, someone calling and saying, mm -hmm. you know, I know, um, someone who's being taken care of by a person and I believe this is what they're doing. Um, and if we can gather enough information, because um, we can't obviously just take, yeah, right. and, you know, somebody saying, right. you know, oh, you know, my neighbor is, you know, stealing money from my other neighbor and that person happens to be disabled. We would have to have some facts around that case and do a little bit of you know, investigating, we would probably, what we would do is recommend to that person that they call the DPPC and make a formal right. report on that person, which, you know, then we would have and would be able to move a little bit forward on, sometimes not always, but, um, so those are the kinds of um, ways that cases come to us. Um, those are some of the things that we do. Now, you know that all of you, if you're, you don't, you don't have to be a mandated reporter to report. There are mandated people who are mandated reporters. Um, I have brought you all a little bit of information on reporting and how to report. Um, so if you think that you have a situation, certainly you're more than welcome to call our office and talk to one of us, Jamie or myself. Um, I always encourage people to report and I do it for two reasons, obviously the number one reason is we want people to be safe, but if you report, your, if your gut says to you, I think something's going on, your mm -hmm. gut's probably right. And we would rather you report something and have it be nothing mm -hmm. than not report it and have it be something. Mm. 
because um, by reporting, um, it does two things. It puts that person on the radar screen, not only in our office, but with the DPPC. Mm -hmm. And um, there may be other cases that have been reported, say if the person lived in another jurisdiction and for some reason moved to Hampshire or Franklin County or the town of Athol, we may never have seen a report on that before. Mm -hmm. So it flips it to us and we're then able to take a look at it and say, oh, okay, well, there's been four other reports made, but this person now is living, you know, in, you know, Shelburne Falls, and, um, you know, this is the past history on this per particular person. So it, it, it actually is a benefit um, in many ways for people, um, if they, you know, for the victim to, to have you report. Um, but if you have a personal care person coming to your home from an agency mm -hmm. and their responsibility is to take care of the person mm -hmm. and then the person has to go to court and hopefully get an attorney, which I do know an incident that did occur, one of the counselors took over on the case, but it's like, how do you actually notify the agency that that person is working for of heads up that there is a problem? Well, um... Or you don't do that until that person's found guilty, or...? Well, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be us that report would be reporting to the agency. Um, so when you report a case to DPPC or, um, and the person has a disability, there's three agencies, civil agencies that we work with. We work with uh, the Department of Developmental Services, the Department of Mental Health, and the Mass Rehab Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, cognitive disabilities, mental health, and physical disabilities. Um, what happens is when a case comes to us through the DPPC, the appropriate agency is notified. Do I ask you a question? You sure can. Um, do you not work with the Commission for the Blind and the Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing? Well, we, we can, but that would come through the Mass Rehab Commission because they, what happens is, um, those three agencies um, all have what's called a civil investigator. Uh, they all have civil investigators assigned to each area of the state, east, west, central, Berkshire, southeast, the Cape and the Islands, the, north, um, the northeast part of the state, you know. So they all have civil investigators um, that are uh, assigned to those areas. What happens with a, so there's two parts to a report. There's the criminal part and the civil part. It's the same way with elders. Um, they have civil, what we call civil investigators and we have investigators which are the police um, that investigate for us. So if the case, so once we get a case and we say, okay, um, we are going to move forward. The civil investigators can't, technically can't start their civil investigation until we say yay or nay. And in some cases, what happens when we say we're gonna look at it criminally, we ask the civil investigator to join in with us because a lot of times it's easier for us to get information if the person has been working with that individual for a very long time. So it really is a benefit to us and it's a benefit for the civil investigator going forward. Um, so, you know, we can gather all the information uh, that we need. And again, civil investigators in some ways have more leeway in getting information and passing it to us than us just saying, no, we don't want you, we'll do our own thing, and then we have to jump through a few more hoops 
to be able to get documentation and things like that. So it's a benefit to both um, the civil and the criminal investigator if we do a joint investigation. Mm -hmm. But always the one thing, if we take a criminal a case and look at it criminally, we never want the civil investigators interviewing the alleged suspect because that's the job of the police and the district attorney's office to be able to orchestrate that portion of, the, of an invest. So in a roundabout way, yes, we have worked with the both commissions. Yeah, because I was just wondering about that because those disability groups sort of have their own agency. Right, right. But they would come under um, the Mass Rehab Commission for investigation. Now they they may in fact said, you know, they would probably gather as much information if say someone was receiving services through those two agencies and maybe had um, someone that followed that person, they would find that out and talk with that person to get as much information. And we would, of course, want, if we were going to interview somebody or the police were going to interview someone who was deaf and hard of hearing or blind, we would want to get the appropriate interpreters and equipment that we needed to be able to do our job effectively. Mm -hmm. Say if somebody, because there is a policy, because I know I've been through it, where I had a problem with a person on the streets before a city council meetings, and I was sitting with a person talking and the behavior on this other person was terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyways, I handled that because he apparently took this whole big bag of papers that he had requesting that I read it in this man who served our country, very polite, very respectful, to read the information in there and I told him it was absolutely unnecessary. Also, the other man told him very nicely, you know, we've listened to you in the consulate for almost 45 minutes, and that's all you've done is complain. What you did about the police department right down the line has come to city council in an open public session and telling us about drugs occurring at McDonald's house and so forth. Well, anyways, in two weeks, back again, I sat on the bench out there, again, came by, and he outright said to me, right to my face, that he wanted to kiss me, okay? I said, I got up, and I said, I do not think so. So, he followed me. I went to our council president. He said, I'm very concerned. He said about him saying, I want to kiss you, okay? Because he did mean business with that. So I went to the police station, talked with them, and they told me to write up the incident, which I did. They said it took three incidences to place a restraining order, which I would have went through my nephew, Pat Melnick, who's an attorney. Wait, no harassment. It's a harassment prevention order. It's an HPO. It's not right. a, a restraining Right, you need three examples of harassment. And right. It's, it's a different standard than a 209A, yeah. which is... Well, the difference is you can get one of those, as I understand it, I work at Safe Passage. So well, they told me they wanted three. Right, that's, that's, the, right. that's, that's right. right. For the, for the, for the harassment yeah. prevention exactly. order, you need three instances of harassment. And the, the difference between that and a restraining order is that you can get that on anyone who's right. harassing you, whereas with a restraining order, there's requirements, like it has to be you know, an intimate partner right. or a, a family personal member, relationship. Right. A personal and I would definitely deal right. with my nephew with all that type of stuff, but this, for some reason, I think the police handled it very well because I was at Big Y just about a month ago, both Gay Down and I, and he was there. And he didn't say a word to me. He just took his head and turned his head. Good. But I meant business with it because, I mean, his behavior was terrible. She actually heard him yelling out to me down by Big Y by Staples, and I go, here we go. Mm -hmm. So are the three incidences, are they needing to be reported to the police, or that you just? Well, you can testify, I've done hearings where someone testifies 
there was a librarian uh, where the person was somebody affiliated with the school and, and he gave her a dirty walk one time and he made a, so you just need three, the, see the difference is the restraining order 298, the standard is an imminent uh, threat of harm, immediate threat of harm, so it says I'm going to kill you or, or does something physically. Well, then what about throwing a bag at you with a whole bunch of papers? That or, man got hit in the arm on the side yeah, of the yeah, face. That's certainly uh, one example of harassment. Well, that's definitely the, harassment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So two more examples. But they right, and you need two more um, examples of that to get. It's more. It's it, It's um. It's a way for um, you and I. We don't have you know. So say for you, that's the perfect example. What you cited is somebody who repeatedly harasses you over time and you can't get a restraining order um, because you don't have that relationship but you did you do have you do have the three situations yes. you can then get the hpo and that protects you yes so, so it's better it's it, it, it's a more it, it's broader in form than it is as mm -hmm. restricted with a 209 so what i tell exactly and a lower standard yeah. so what i tell i work at I'm a counselor at Safe Passage Domestic Violence Program. So what I tell people all the time who come to the office that um, to document really carefully the incidences and anything, any kind of physical evidence, like if someone sends a harassing email or text or there's mm -hmm. any kind of evidence that can help law enforcement, you know, determine what's happening to, to save those things and keep on top of keeping track and then present it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't feel safe and you feel threatened, you can call 911. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, you know, you can always do that. Um, which just, you know, helps to document the fact that there are three. You have three. Mm -hmm. Especially if you've coupled it with calling 911. It was scary. I've just yeah, never started that. I would just was. take a bag full of all these papers and fling it at this yeah. guy. Yeah. It was awful. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure it was scary. Yep. Yep. Any more questions? What else would you like to know? Um, do you get calls from persons with disabilities or um, seniors about scams? All the time. Scams, yeah. Every day. What yeah. are some Maybe. of the ones, what are some of the, um, this would just be probably helpful information just to know, what, what are some of the scams that are most commonly going around right now that people are calling about that we should all be aware of. The IRS scam. Yeah. Yes. What? The IRS scam. Uh, they what is that? Hey, I, I just interrupt because I know someone personally that had this where in, in the woman, relatively intelligent, uh, they they said just like official business said, we're from the IRS, you owe us X amount, we need the money now. And this woman was gullible enough Oh my to, God, to, scared. to get that. I and, hope that's not my and resident. And the IRS will only do things in writing. They will mm -hmm. not call. Right. And the elderly are most vulnerable. Right, because mm -hmm. I was just at a resident's house about four weeks ago off of Loudville Road. She told me that everything's been done by phone and she had to pay so much. Then oh, all no. of a sudden she got another call. She's 92 years oh, old. Oh, no. She got another call and she said this was from like a state or somewhere she never even heard of that she owed another $400. Oh, then another phone call came in and I said, you need to call did your attorney. Send, did she send the money? I don't know. I said, please. call she your call. attorney no, right no, away. No, no, no. no her police. attorney's not going to do anything. Yeah, she needs to call the police. Yeah, that's a police matter. That's, that's a someone, police matter. Not someone, a, it's not an right. a private it's, attorney matter. No. It's a police matter. So that's you what I call 911. Yeah. You say, or you call the business, the business line. Number, the, you call yeah. the business line and say, I need to speak to an officer. Um, uh, well, or, you know, a lot of the officers yeah. can handle that. Um, you need to call. You need to have somebody come out. I need to have somebody come out to my house. Someone's calling me continually, asking me for money. Now, generally, the reason why they call back and ask for more is because we've sent money in the first place. Okay. Right. Yeah. My my yeah. gut would say to me if they're continually calling and asking for more, that she sent something. Yeah. That would be my guess. Probably. 
Um, because that's generally how it works. If you don't send anything, they're not going to bother with you, you anymore. Yeah. So you hang up. up. Yeah. So if you if you so the 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 right thing to, the best thing to do would be to be informed about this and to just hang up. To um, be informed about. I mean, to to know right. that this is a scam and to hang oh, up. Yeah. Well, here's the thing I tell people, and it's the old ad adage: if it's a sounds too good to be true, mm -hmm. it probably is. B the ones that try to scare you, like the IRS, like the granny scam we call them, that's the one where they call and your one? grandchild is in jail in Canada, they got I into a car accident. My mother that's, hit with that one. Yep. Yeah, um, you money. need to send you know, $3,000 for bail, mm -hmm. um, but you know, Johnny doesn't want his mom and dad to know so you know he wanted us to call you i would mm. hang up on that but you can also say i'm going to call johnny's parents to make sure he's he and he's okay and um can i have a phone number where um i can reach you you know it's amazing though mm. because how they brainwash an elderly person because one of our city employees, her boyfriend's mother, the same thing. And it was from an island. Mm. And all of a sudden they became best buddies. That's exactly how she explained it to me. The police department was involved in it. The banks, right down the line. They took every penny from her. Can and she's in her 90s. And that happens. And you have the police investigating everybody. Well, so here's the thing that happens. So these scams that we're talking about aren't generally happening in the United States. Right. They're happening overseas. You know, they're happening in Jamaica, and Canada, and Mexico, and Nigeria. Um, now, what you have to remember is that when you wire money or you send cash, a cashier's check, yeah. um, or you send a prepaid debit card, that there is no way to trace where that money has gone. So there's no way to get the money back. There, there's no way to get the money back, and who are you going to look for? Right. How come you can't trace it if you've got a debit card, like you said, or what kind a of a prepaid card? debit card? So if you go to the bank and you take five hundred dollars out of the bank and you go to Walmart and buy here, I want a prepaid debit card. All they're going to know is that it came from Walmart. Oh. Mm -hmm. You're sending it in the mail, or what the trick is actually is how they did do that is that they call you back once you get the prepaid debit card and have you scratch off the silver strip in the back which has the routing number and you just give them the routing number over the phone and that goes directly into their bank account. Mm -hmm. So you're never, I mean, we can have the police investigate that all day long, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. the I, you're never going to find that. I know. Where are they? I shoot off emails that I get to the police department. Mm -hmm. It's about, well, somebody died, so and so, right? And I'm leaving yeah. you so much money. And I was working very closely with the captain of the police department. Same old person, same old person, same old person. Then they actually did find out that one of the emails that I received came from a school in Georgia. They're evil, though. Is that from uh, Sully? Yeah. He's yeah, texting David Sullivan yep. uh, to see if he's coming. Yeah. So no matter what emails I get about you're getting all this kind of money and everything, I still send them right to the police department. Yeah, well, you know. And, and it's okay. amazing how they tracked it. And one of them they found, it was from somebody mm -hmm. at yeah. school it's in Georgia. It's rare, but it happens. But, you know, the best thing is, Take, if that happens to you, think about it before you do something. Really, it's like if you were going to go buy a car, would you, you know, well, I, this is sometimes a bad analogy because people do it, but would you buy a car sight unseen? Would you buy, you know, were you, would you spend 35000 on a car you never 
Now put your yourself no. in. Mm -hmm. You know, would you uh, put a fifty thousand uh, dollar addition on your home and never check out the home improvement contractor, which people do? Yeah, right. But would you think about it practically? If you think about it practically, um, would you give up money without making sure? you knew who mm -hmm. you were giving it to. So it seems like one thing that we need to think about figuring out a way to do um, is to educate people about these scams. We do. How do you how do you do um, how do you do that? Uh, we do I do outreach all the time. Oh, that's uh, great. Janice Barrett, myself, Caroline Smith um, we're out in the public in the two counties all the time. Oh, that's I'm excellent. always happy to, to do it. I'm always happy to go out and do education. Um, we do it all the time. Um, it's just like anything. You can, I'll give you an example. I work very closely. I um, coordinate the triad program for the, for the DA. Mm -hmm. And I work very closely with Hadley and one of, and the chair of the uh, triad there called me last week and said, I have to run something by you. I got a phone call from the IRS and she said it was a Sergeant Shirley Jones, I think was the person's name. And it, there was a phone number, so I said, okay. She said, I know, I know that it's not right, but it sounds convincing. I'm like, okay. I said, well, you did the right thing. You didn't call back. So I called. And, of course, Shirley was not in. Sergeant Shirley was not in at the moment. But um, her supervisor, John something was, and I said, oh. I said, well, do you normally, this is the IRS. Oh, yes. I said, uh, now, do you normally call up on um, um, older adults and tell them that there's a criminal investigation and they must call you back right away. Well, um, what is the person's name? I said, well, I'm not going to give you that. I said, but is that your general practice? Well, I don't know who it is. I'm like, that's okay, but I'm asking you, is that your general practice? Um, I said, is there someone else? Do you have a supervisor that I could speak with? I am the supervisor. I'm like, okay. I said, is there another person in the room with you that I could speak with? No, don't worry about it, ma'am. It's okay. What? It was a scam. I'm sure if I call the number back five minutes later, it would be totally disconnected. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. That's frightful. Wow. It's really good that you um, do education about that. Mm -hmm. Because that's, yeah, I might... Have you come sometime? I'd love to. I have. A, I, have I, I think that um, people who are vulnerable. I mean, I think that's why a lot of them do prey on the elderly and disabled. I mean, mm -hmm. people are people are vulnerable. Like people who have been through stuff and aren't thinking clearly and are afraid mm -hmm. of getting in trouble. Um, Especially those, or yeah. they're afraid that their loved one is in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, people who. Um, I think in terms of, and, and that's just a small, that, that, that is a way people get others, pe other people's money. I mean, we've seen thousands of dollars lost that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the other thing we have to be really aware of, and it goes back to your meeting, is that um, caregivers are huge perpetrators of that. Um, more so with the elder population with, than with the disabled population. Mm -hmm. um, because the, um, unless the um, person with a disability is um, completely um, unable to make any type of um, competency decision, um, would that happen? There, People with disabilities are more apt to be victims of physical abuse um, and sexual abuse. Um, elders, it's the other way around. It's more elders are victims of financial exploitation mm -hmm. and physical abuse versus sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. and, and part of that is that elders don't report sexual abuse. Um, so we see um, our caseload is generally financial in nature with um, elders and generally sexual and physical in nature with um, 
with persons with disabilities. But I do think it's the caregiver, um, and, and drugs is another one. I mean, there's a lot of people stealing drugs um, from elders and persons with disabilities. People that are taking care of them, you mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a big, very big case um, out of um, East Hampton right now with a caregiver who was stealing drugs from the people she was caring for. Oh, yeah, he's here. That's um, awful. Yeah, well, but it, it's real. It's what happens. It, it, it happens. It's real. And it's going to continue. Domestic violence is on the rise. I'm sure that yeah. you see people over 60. Yeah, yeah. Now people yeah, forget yeah. that once they turn the magical yeah, yeah. age of 60, yeah, yeah. that um, everything changes. So if you've had a history of domestic yeah. violence, yeah. and um, yeah. you've had that over time, and all of a sudden you turn 60, and you're spouse is hitting you and, and, and abusing you physically, those are now felony matters. They're no longer a misdemeanor. They will become a felony matter um, where the penalties are enhanced. So domestic violence is, is always a concern, but when you hit the age of 60, it just becomes a, you know, and people don't realize it's now a felony instead of it could be a misdemeanor or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's now a felony, and if it's a if it's a with injury or it in, increases, so sixty coupled with domestic violence, and we do see we're seeing it more and more mm -hmm. where there's a lot more domestic violence among elders, but it's the young elder versus the elder who might be you know seventy five <laughs> or even eighty and up. Mm -hmm. um, not to say we haven't seen that in in the city. I mean, we prosecuted an 81 year old not too too many years ago mm. for severely beating his wife <coughs> um, two times. Um, probably never had gotten caught. Mm -hmm. Would be my guess. Um, but both of them were 81, and you know he ended up in jail the second time. She was talking about the IRS scams, which I didn't know about. A lot of us didn't know about this, and I'm a victim. I I both social security numbers, my wife and uh, taken, and then there's a, the other scam. There's a scam every day. Awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I told you an example of a resident, 90, 95 on my ward, four weeks ago, who told me about the IRS several times, calling, asking for money, <coughs> and then not from around here. Yep. Well, the IRS is never going to call you. The IRS doesn't call. That's they only it. send you a letter in the mail. Yeah. They will never call you. That's something people don't always know. Right. They'll never call. They'll always send you a letter. But the biggest scam is people stealing people's identification, finding returns mm. on have. That's what happened to me. So. I got to be that. Yeah. yeah. And that's hard to, you know, that that's, takes a long time to fix that. Was that after you became DA? Yeah. yeah. About a year ago. I, I, I think everybody. But they don't uh, know that. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the things that gets recommended by both Chris and um, uh, also Janice Garrett, the director of our consumer protection, is in this day and age, it's worth having a credit reporting agency pay the thirty-five bucks, fifty bucks to, you know, seal up your your credit. I mean, mm -hmm. it's well worth it, especially like especially it. anybody. But you know, uh, you're you're sixty, seventy-five years old. Somebody steals your identity and takes all your money out of your bank account, so you're never mm -hmm. going to replenish it. But exactly. that, that money, to, whether it's Equifact or Asperian or whatever it is, mm -hmm. to have them as your credit protection bureau, um, I think is well worth the money to pay well, that I do one time, you know? I have it yearly and I pay it. Yeah. So, I mean, Cash I cards, whatever. Yeah. What, are the, um, what are the steps that one should take if that happens to them. Like if you start seeing things like charges on your credit card that you know that you didn't. Uh, immediately okay. contact your credit card. Yeah, company. immediately. And, and credit card companies are better now, but if it happens locally, they're not gonna know the difference. So immediately call your credit card company and tell them that you, you have a charge on there that you absolutely did not make. You'll have to close your credit card out. The other thing you're going to need to do is go to the police department and um, uh, make, 
make a report because one of the things you want and the credit reporting agencies are going to want and the credit card company is documentation so they, they will want a police report. Mm -hmm. And police departments know that. Um, so you always should go, if you feel you've been a victim of identity theft, whether it's a debit card or a credit card, or you notice something, well, it would be one or the other, um, unless somebody's gotten a hold of your checks, which is very common, and mm -hmm. ripped a check out of the back and um, written a check to themselves. You need that police report, um, and because you're gonna wanna file it with any documentation that you will be required and, to file. And, the, and the police departments weren't up to speed on this. So what we did is we did an outreach campaign for the Franklin and Hampshire police chiefs mm -hmm. and their departments to have the kit that we um, got from the Federal Trade Commission who we use. So they all have a standard affidavit, a complaint, the number they need to call to report it to the credit bureau. So Northampton Police will have that kit there so they can help people because a lot of folks That's good. Aren't, don't understand that you need to file that report and affidavit to sometimes get the compensation mm -hmm or for that company to, to reimburse them for, mm. for that theft. So. I have those books, um, and I know Caroline does too. Uh, Do Caroline have, Smith is um, um, our consumer protection. Do you have those kits, Patty? We don't. Let's, let's, it's, a, it's a booklet. Let's, um, let's, let's get a, a bunch of kits for you so I that I can hear it through. Yeah, we can get that to you. I'll, get, I'll bring you 50. Yeah, and we've got the... But it's just making it simple for, for, for the folks. Ex, the kids mm -hmm. for, for it's a booklet. Time. It's it's a it's a really nice booklet um, that the um, Federal Trade Commission puts out and um, Can I have some too? Sure. Um, and um, it's it's a step by step guide about identity theft. It's got the affidavit oh. in it, it tells you what to do. Um, it's got the information on the credit bureau. So it's a really, really, really good book. Yeah, I'm at We gave them out um, mm -hmm. at the health fair. Oh. What is that big one that they advertise on TV now? Mm -hmm. Quick lock or something? Oh, life lock? Life lock. Do you know anything about that? No. Well, I'm at Safe Passage in Northampton and we would love to have some of those booklets. I can get those to you. How many would you like? That would be excellent. Um, well, what can you, I, can you I, spare? I, I don't know what I have left, but I can look. Which I can get 50 to Patty. Would you like... Um, what? 20 or 30 maybe? 30. Mm -hmm. Is that too many? No. Nope. We can always good? order more. Yeah. I mean, they're a great publication. Yeah. So we'll give you the outreach materials, you know, that if you have questions yeah. of yeah. Chris or of... Janice um, Garrett um, or Caroline who works in consumer. I'll send them over from somebody who's going over that way shortly. Okay, and you, we're at 43 Center Street, mm -hmm. and I'm Tori, T O R I. You could just stay there for me. Because <coughs> um, that, that is, um, that would be extremely helpful. Yep, I'll get those to you. Um, and one, one, one more question about any, those booklets. Do you, do you happen to have those in, um, in addition to sending the print? Materials. Do you happen to have those in any kind of like something that would be accessible to me, like any kind, any electronic format, so that I could read it over myself? Because I'm blind. Mm -hmm. I will. I I don't. But you know what? We can look online and see if they do. They very well may. Okay, because I would love to actually yeah. read it. No yeah. problem. It's FTC, so I, I would imagine yeah. that they may have it uh, accessible. Um, so yep. Chris I'll can get you that. that. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. It's a really simple how-to, and that's, people are overwhelmed when this happens. They don't know where to start. Yep. It really kind of helps them, you know, kick into gear with getting the affidavit and the police report filed, and then getting those uh, credit reporting agencies to shut down their accounts and to protect them. Okay. You know? right. That would be another amazing. resident I had just recently on Florence Road told me that this week, you know, those little iPhones, and you can pay. It's like your credit card on your iPhone. Yeah, go to Starbucks with it or anything, and yep. was at a variety store just locally around here, and apparently went after their debit card and drew out one thousand three hundred. Yeah, I don't like Starbucks. Starbucks. Starbucks has been hit. And yeah, I don't put those things on myself. Me either. I would anybody that's smart won't. It's a recipe for. Disaster. I would never do that. Uh uh. There's way too much information. It There's is. No reason. 
to There's do no that. reason. Um, it's convenience what is what it is. Yes. It's, for people, it's convenience. But well, for me, it's a recipe for a disaster. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. More you questions. I'm here to answer the <laughs> question. Does anyone have any more questions about this or anything else related? No. I just wanted to let you know, though, I've um, been working with Jeff Harness and mm -hmm. I met Joanne at Lisa Baskin's house, who's the CEO, which you know, and president of Cooley Dick. And I was really pushing toward, because transportation apparently has been a problem for many people throughout our city and around. Mm -hmm. And so now we are going to coordinate, Patty and I and the Commission on Disabilities, we're gonna have quarterly meetings at the Cooley Dick, which is great. So mm -hmm. we're moving in Good. to work together. Good, good, yeah, excellent. Yeah, Jeff is great, I mean, he's part of that whole oh, he's super community good. health outreach and and they had a summit on it not too long ago. Yeah, I know. We sent some yeah. people, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, so um, what I would say to you is that I encourage you to report. Mm -hmm. um, I have, um, I have, um, oh, did I bring all the Spanish ones? I brought some in Spanish and I brought some in very few in English. Oh. That's great for the seniors that are Spanish and well I'll give you these. And these are all in Spanish. That's hysterical, which is fine. Uh, we can leave those here. I'll get some ones um, my other ones. This is a um, this is uh, the booklet, the pamphlet on reporting to the DPPC. Mm -hmm. And then there's some magnets with the phone number. You can have those. Mm -hmm. And these I thought would but be. I have one of those. You I'd can like have as many. I'm going to leave them. You can take as many and, as you want. And then these you, you might want. These are um, uh, signs of um, abuse uh, for persons with disabilities, which for me, they cross over to elders as well. It's absolutely. Really no so, yeah, absolutely. I'll leave those right here for you. So we can get that to membership and then also we have a... Yeah, a I'll leave all of it. I have a ton of it. Um, yeah. I have tons and tons and tons. And tons so you never have to and, worry and I, about and that. I think that what's really important is like child abuse, it's suspicion. Oh, yeah. So it, it really, you know, and I can't say it enough, if, if people have that clue, if it doesn't pan out, there's no harm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really isn't. It's confidential, it goes in, but that suspicion that ends up being confirmed could save an elder, either their life savings or their wife, because you know, well, they're being physically abused. We just, you know? yeah, we just had a case um, in the beginning of April, it was an elder, um, where we, the um, Protective Services Agency got an anonymous call in regards to this woman. She was being neglected. And um, they went to the house, and then finally the daughter went to the house, and the mother be ended up being transported because she was so severely neglected to the hospital and then down to another hospital because she was gravely ill and ended up dying as a result of Oh my gosh. Her, well, who did that though? I mean, somebody. Her care team. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's awful. So, an anonymous tip. An anonymous. Uh, How tip. long was that going on? Well, I had it going on for a while. That's awful. So, you got an anonymous tip? Somebody uh, the whole, the No, no, no. The, um, the reporting agency, which is Franklin County Homes in Franklin County, they got the report and then uh, it was followed up on and then. Uh, she was taken to the hospital and transferred to another hospital and later died of her injuries. So, anonymous, you can be anonymous. And the person didn't even give their name, they just said, I'm really concerned. Mm. So, you don't ha even have to tell. And even if you do tell who it is, they're not going to give out that information. Mm. They're, that's all private. So, mm. even if you call and say, I'm Marianne Labarge. I think my, this is happening to my neighbor. This is what I see. They're not going to release your name. No. Right. Which is important. Right. You know, yes. Because 
you know, the senior center and the folks, you have such a huge membership of folks, mm -hmm. that, that's the eyes and ears for the community, for the disabled and for, for seniors. And mm -hmm. for them to be able to, uh, you know, particularly when you're in a position here, you don't want to burn that bridge if it ends up being mm -hmm. not to pan out. And, right. and, and, but it's important that, that people, uh, whether they, you know, be the leader of the senior center or anybody who comes, uh, be able to report that and you know, that goes for child abuse too i mean you know the seniors have a, have a they've been part of observing child care for their whole lives and you know it's really important and sometimes it's guardianship situations where they actually have to call um on their own kids you know if one of the kids is abusing yeah. substances that's it's well it's but it's, but it's, it's, it's real yeah. it's real it happens yeah. it happens I, every I, day i would imagine that the number of seniors in northampton that have guardianship roles is probably pretty large i mean you would probably know patty from mm -hmm. conversations a lot of seniors taking care of grandchildren who are older yeah. which is hard um, yeah they're they're they are caregivers who really could be having some caregiving for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's true. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no, it's so well, true. Well, we did a lot in the probate and family court because that's where people had to come to get the legal relationship. <coughs> and we had, it was almost always a substance abuse issue. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't, it was a mental health issue. But mm. it was definitely that substance abuse really drove the guardianship. Yeah. yeah. But it's because somebody cared enough to call DCF. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you know, for Hampshire County, you know, Highland Valley Elder Services yep. or, you know, um, you know disability um, you know, protection. I mean, it's just, that's what they're there for. They're right. there to investigate, figure out if it's, you know, um, you know, confirmed or, you know, substantiated. And if it's not, then, you know, it, they move on. I just got another call. I feel like I'm a detective on my boyfriend. <laughs> 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 You are. No. And I said, counselor, and this is a senior, she's like 62, 63, but she's not afraid to tell you that she's had a drug problem way back, way back. She said, counselor, I think there was movement in one house. And I said, what do you mean, movement? She goes, I see people coming in and out throughout the day. A hand comes out at the door. That person gets it, they're gone. So I called the police department and left a message to Captain um, Clayton in regards to this person's concerns, because we've had difficulties on the street before, big time, and gave her the resident's name, and both the wife and husband would be glad to talk to the police department because they really feel that there is drug dealing going on. You know, so I have people with the neighborhood watch, which is really great, and that street is fantastic. Any kind of movement, boom, they'll call me. Good. Yep. So I'm hoping that I get an update to see what might be happening. Yeah. And that would be awesome. That's why Hampshire County is one of the safest counties in Massachusetts, Absolutely. if not the safest, yeah. I'd say either Russell or the Berkshires, because of citizen awareness and participation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that people don't ignore issues when they come into their neighborhood and say it's somebody else's mm -hmm. problem. So, you know, that's a classic example of how a neighborhood watch you know, can and should work, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I know, think they should do updates on the neighborhood watch because it has not happened. There's no more a neighborhood watch. Mm -hmm. trainings going on anymore because of the fires that occurred in North Hampton. Yeah. We did it. We had a, a Ruth, how many streets do we have? Probably about nine, mm -hmm. ten streets. Then all of a sudden after the fires and everything slowed well, down. That's, that's kind of not unusual. Yeah. You know, know. Every there's 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 no day no but community. drugs is such a huge Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of reasons why it's good to break but the entrance. Breaking the entrance. I remember you had a whole rash of up in your ward. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, and, you know, and that's part of why we have the anti-crime task force oh. is so that our state police and then other local police have been working to break up these rings. But, you know, there's nothing more important than citizen awareness. Yeah, that there people see that there's a car parked there when there's, you know, you know. Right. Who, but I think it's a wake-up call that we need to do it again. 
you know, we need to educate the public again. Mm -hmm. We're here. Because mm -hmm. I remember Chris and Sheriff Garvey, you guys put yes, on a whole thing. Yes, he was excellent. Another guy from, from doing yep. this. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you both for coming. Appreciate it. Yes, and I will get those books to Patty and then to you, Tori. Thank you. You're welcome. That's wonderful. That will be really, really useful. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for being at our health and safety. Um, we had a blast. We got rid of all our stuff. Tony Patillo. We've got, we have it down to a science. They're on the side. Like, never. We never. don't, you know, it's like, we don't miss a beat. I, I don't. Then we have people, people, and actually, we actually make people, you know, we don't make them, but we'll engage them, right. right, you know, yeah. which is great. Right. Other people just sit there, and it's like, okay, well, yeah, you make the most of the mayor's right. That's right. The mayor's got a meeting at six All right, you guys, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank 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 you so Yes, uh, oh, I know you both. I know you're busy. Yeah. It's on my schedule. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, Christy and Dave. Yes, thank oh, you. We appreciate it. Thank you both so Christy, much. Christy, I might have you come to Social Services Veterans City Council. Community. No problem. Any, 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 you know, let this me even know the date so I'm available. I will. I'm booked right up now through October. No problem. Just let me know. But I think of incidences that occurred, I would probably would want the police department there with you also. Yep. Yep. No, that's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to look in the black hole here for a minute, see where the keys are. This is my game. The funny games of my day. Okay. So we're going to. Okay. Go. Thank you. There must be in my coat pocket. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so um, finishing up our meeting, do we have any um, announcements before we call the meeting? Patty, you said you had an announcement. Okay. okay, Ruth, you have an announcement? Well, I have two things. Um, first of all, I'm going to leave this meeting tonight. I, I witnessed the situation and really bad. I've never seen it before. But this time, somebody almost got killed. At the intersection of South Street and Main Street, the lights they have up there, the crosswalk, when you're turning right onto, I'm sorry, when, yeah, when you're turning, I'm coming down. When you come, if you come out, you take a lot. I'm turning. Um, it's down by the big intersection. You turn right to go down South Street. I'm coming down Home Street, come around the curve. Okay. There's the big light. Right by the academy? Yeah. That green light turns green at the same time as the cross light, crosswalk light turns to walk. There's a lady, I don't know if, I hate to admit it, but I don't know if it was a lady or gentleman, mm -hmm. somebody all covered up in coats and stuff, in a wheelchair. The cross light turned. She went, the car in front of me was from Florida. Mm -hmm. I noticed the place. They got the green light and just zoomed right around the corner. And somebody grabbed her, and if they hadn't pulled her out of the way, she would have been killed. Oh. We gotta let Northampton know that they either have to change the crossing light so that it doesn't go to you know flash cross, or a walk rather, when the light turns green, or something has to be changed in that situation. You, you should. Uh, my suggestion would be to um, call Richard Cuthbert. Yeah, I was gonna say to call the. Um, DPW um, to make that, and it would get recorded as being a situation. Okay, I, I thought about doing that, and then I wondered if, because I can't do it as a member of the commission on my own, if we would have more. Well, if you call Richard, he's actually heading. I, I mean, that's, 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 that's just a, that's a regular safety issue. I feel, okay. I feel like you could, um, would anybody disagree with this? I mean, I don't see why you couldn't, um, Identify yourself as a member of the commission. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't have a problem. Yeah. I don't have a, no one. I don't have a problem with that, and yeah. you could say that. That that was one of the things I wanted to bring up. What was your other? Just because it happened. The other it? one is one that I I didn't let Troy know about. I went to a meeting, a city meeting, several weeks ago now. Uh, about the proposed increase in water sewer bills. We had a situation there. Oh, I said I was going to put, didn't I say I was going to put that on the agenda for next time? Or, oh, did you? Yeah, I, oh, okay. I had emailed you to say that I would put that on the agenda for next time if you wanted to talk about it in more detail. Okay, you can wait then. Okay. So that's it for me. Patty, I have some changes to the website. Okay. I emailed oh, you, Patty, you said you had yep. an announcement? Um, so the two benches have been installed in Florence and um, I'm responsible for getting the plaque. So I'm going through my folder to look at what we all decided as that simple message 
that was going to be on it. And I don't want to pursue it until you all tell me really what that message was going to be, what we wanted on it. Donated I we by decided on that. We did, but what I'm saying is it's not in my folder, so I don't um, I don't want to just assume what I think it was. Was it something like gift of the Northampton Council of Commission? Or donated by the donated by the Commission. Donated by the Commission on Disability. Donated by the Commission on Disability. I found gift gifted because we didn't want and to say date. donated, but that's fine. Either one. Yeah. Um, I think it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah. And I think once you, because it takes two weeks to get them, Richard Pasoletti said as soon as they come in, he'll go up and put them on the benches. Yeah. Patty, I would like to, maybe we can get a hold of um, Lori Lozell from the oh, Gazette yeah, yeah, that you had and have a picture that. taken yeah. of it. Yeah, it would maybe good. we could have it with Richard putting the plaques up. Yeah, that would be a great idea. So we <coughs> can have that, but um, they put those up um, yesterday, Bill, and I want 18. 18? Yeah, that was yesterday. Yeah. So, they look good. I haven't sat in one yet because I haven't been on the street. I've well, he promised me that they would have them cleaned up before he put them out there. Yeah, yeah they I mean, look nice. We were there when they were putting them in yesterday, Bill and I, and we bugged the workers and sat on the benches. Oh, yeah, okay, good. Oh, okay, well, broke them in. That's that's great. That really is is a good concrete thing that we contributed to the community. Oh, definitely. And that's that is. I mean, we had. Do what we had to do. We had to have the hearings on. Yep. You yep. know, and that's what pushed it and made it. Otherwise, it never would have happened. Right. And, and as much yep. as we knew it was a good idea and a very functional, <clears throat> intangible thing for um, Florence and for people who could benefit from it, it really took patience and yep. it took a length of time. Two public hearings. But we yes, have what happened. We have succeeded. So on that note, is there anything else or do we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. See you well, all thank next you, everyone. Month. Thank you.